Okay, so I think I can get started. Um, so hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us at Green Economy London for a discussion on food waste reduction strategies for consumers and businesses. We will also explore how addressing food waste supports resilient food systems and a sustainable future. This webinar is being recorded today, so it can be posted onto YouTube afterwards for those who couldn't make the session, uh, just for your awareness. So for our green economy leaders that are on this webinar, remember that attending um, counts as an activity in our employee engagement program, Workplace Green Up. So you can take a picture at some point during the session and tag us on our socials using the hashtag Workplace Green Up 2022 to earn your points. Um, we'll begin with an introduction to Green Economy London um, and then an overview of waste and food waste in London. This will be followed by our two wonderful guest speakers to talk about zero waste and resilient food systems and the sustainable development goals. I'll then go into how businesses can address waste with Green Economy London and there will be a question and answer period at the end of the session today. So if you have any questions that come up, please write them in the uh, chat box. So Green Economy London is the business sustainability program hosted by the London Environmental Network. We are one of the nine Green Economy Canada hubs across Canada. Green Economy Canada works with community organizations to launch hubs that work with local businesses to set and achieve sustainability targets and create a more sustainable future. We currently have 64 Green Economy London members and are continuing to grow. So what we offer is a practical, cost-effective, collaborative, and community-based approach for businesses to set and achieve reduction targets. The target areas we focus on are greenhouse gas emissions, waste reduction and diversion, water conservation, and environmental stewardship. Our webinar today really goes into further ways that we can address waste and set waste reduction and diversion targets as businesses. So here's a quick, uh, just a quick view of our current green economy leaders. And then I also wanted to just take a moment to thank our sponsors who help us run our programs and events like this webinar. Some some terms that we that tend to come up a lot in the waste conversation are waste diversion and waste reduction. Diversion refers to the amount of waste that was going into the landfill but has been diverted to either recycling stream or organic stream. Reduction of waste means that less waste is being produced. Ideally, you want to start with reducing as much as possible and then try to find ways to divert the remaining waste you produce. In the City of London, food waste makes up just under half of the waste found in London's landfills. Therefore, it's important for us to learn to divert by composting or reduce by eating the food instead of throwing it out. Wasting food does waste money and it also contributes to the release of methane from landfills, um, contributing to the increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Food waste can be defined as any food or drink that has been discarded along the supply chain. However, according to the National Zero Waste Council, consumers are responsible for 47% of the total food waste. This means food waste needs to be tackled at the consumer and food supply chain level. A couple of quick ways to tackle food waste is to buy ugly fruit and vegetables, buy local and in season, think circular, and learn about proper food storage. So this session today will not only talk about food waste, but we'll also learn about all aspects of waste. We'll look at zero waste, creating less waste overall, and look into food resilient systems, food insecurity, and the connection to the sustainable development goals. Throughout the presentation, we'll explore ways that you can tackle waste as a business and as an individual. Our first guest speaker today is Hino Rajani from Reimagine Co. to talk to us all about Reimagine Co. and its zero waste philosophy and how businesses and consumers can reduce waste and work towards becoming zero waste. As a quick introduction, Hino is a social entrepreneur, facilitator, dad, stepdad, and poet. Alongside his wife, Kara, Hino is the co-founder of Reimagine Co., which operates a package-free grocery store, Thing Library, and is a community hub in downtown London. A director of the London Environmental Network, Hainel is dedicated to making London one of the most greenest and resilient cities in Canada. And he also received the London Inc. Magazine's 20 Under 40 Award in 2020. Committed to climate justice, activism, and placemaking since moving to Turtle Island, Hainel has co-organized festivals of community participation, including 100 in One Day, City of Neighbors Day, Place Matters, and Earth Fest. 
Heedle's interests include biking, running, swimming, dancing, nature, travel, Web3, and DAOs. I'll uh, pass it to you, Heedle, to take it from here. Thank you very much for that introduction, Alison, and thanks everyone for coming today. Uh, I normally do this as like a one hour or one and a half hour workshop. So I'm gonna speak really, really fast and try to communicate as much as I can. And uh, let me share my screen as well. And just so you know, this presentation, I'm gonna share the link with you afterwards. So you don't need to make notes or anything like that. I'll be showing the presentation and some other resources afterwards. Um, hopefully it's gonna let me do the share screen. Um, hold on, okay. All right, so can you see, can you see my screen now? You see this reimagine. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just get straight into it. So reimagine, as Alison said, it was my wife, Kara and I, we founded reimagine in 2018, about four years ago, just curious how many people have, have um, been to reimagine or heard of reimagine, maybe just leave a note in the chat. Uh, and, and I encourage you, if you have questions, I might not be able to get to them all, please ask the questions in the chat window. If I can't get them in the presentation, I'll come back to them afterwards. And so we founded Reimagine. We started on our, we actually met 10 years ago yesterday, actually 10 years ago yesterday we met. And I moved to Canada in 2017. I'm originally from England. We actually met in Guatemala. And uh, we, we, we started to live in a package-free lifestyle ourselves, found that there wasn't really supports or places to buy uh, uh, items or to refill your, your ref, uh, cleaning products, things like that in London. So we formed in the old Novax building on King Street, a pop-up shop that was supposed to be a three month pop-up uh, as a, really a place to you know, learn and share together. So we had all kinds of workshops and events going on that were all completely free to the public. We had all different kinds of refillable products. And then the pandemic came, we shut down our store, moved to curbside only, ran a crowdfunding campaign just over two years ago, we were able to raise over $88,000 that allowed us to move into our new permanent location that I'll, that I'll show you a little bit later in the, in, in the slides. So that's that's kind of how we got how we got started. And we used to do this presentation. We used to call it Zero Waste 101, how to live plastic free, but then realized living plastic free is not completely possible or really or really uh, you know realistic. But but how can we do all do a little bit better? You know, if, if everybody in the world did a little bit better, that would be a, a huge step in the right direction rather than trying to go completely zero waste. So that was the first thing I wanted to kind of flag. Just briefly, real quickly, why is zero waste? Might why might you be thinking about? about about uh, about zero waste and you know if it hopefully the fact that you're here today means you're already thinking about this but you know plastic is most plastic that's created is actually a lot of it's for, for packaging a lot of it's single use plastic production is increasing you know not not decreasing it's actually increasing massively around the world including canada it's one of the fastest growing industries in canada is actually plastic production believe it or not and 90 you know over 90 percent of plastic has never been recycled for, for various reasons it's not recyclable it gets put in the wrong bin it gets, gets dirty, it, it, many, many reasons. Uh, it gets burned instead of, lots of reasons. Plastic doesn't actually get recycled, even if it could be. And can, Canadians generate you know, more than any, more garbage than any other person, uh, country in the world, apart from some really maybe tiny Gulf states, but Canadians are, are right up there. So that was actually what started us on our zero waste journey is realizing that this, you know, we think of Canada as this green, lib, you know, liberal, progressive country, but actually we're, we're creating a lot of waste, uh, not to mention the mining and, and tar sands, et cetera. Why is zero waste important? This is a global climate emergency. You know, we all have to do our parts and you're not just us doing our parts as individuals, us doing the parts as businesses, as communities, as cities. And we need to shift the, the, the agenda and shift the whole way of, of living. And I can talk a little bit more about that later. And then, you know, when we talk about zero waste, it doesn't mean zero. It means just we can all do something. Anyone can do something. And together, anything is possible. I think we saw that during the pandemic, you know, when it came down to when, our, you know, lives, millions of lives were threatened. We were able as a country, as a, a, a global economy to shift our whole ways of being and, and people stopped going to the office, people stopped going out, you know, and we, we were able to, you know, you know, still have COVID, COVID is still here, but we were able to, to make uh, a big inroads against this, this virus. You know, why can't we do the same for climate change? Well, we can do the same. We can do the same for, for climate. We can do the same for the environmental breakdown around us. How to reduce waste. And um, again, I'm gonna share all this, but the six R's, you may have heard the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Really, it's, it starts, you know, there's six R's, there's probably even more than this, there's definitely even more than this, but reducing is the key one, as Alison said. It's like, where, where, where can we, what, you know, how can we, how can we shift our, our patterns of consumption? How can, how can we just, you know, just say no, say no to freebies, say no to single use things, you know, just like, that, there's, 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 there's a whole, there's a whole um, presentation I could do about, about just about re reducing and, and, and reusing. Um, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, and then, 
uh, and then you know re and recycling is the next is is the next thing down from from that is the, is is the next is the next thing that we can we can do is if you know if something can't be reduced or or or, or um, you can't find a way of avoiding something recycling repair is a huge one huge one reusing buy things used uh and uh refilling you know uh instead of single use uh, uh containers for things and the big one reimagining you know, put this on here you know making you know we've got to connect with community find more sustainable ways of living and you know not just in our own lives but trying to shift things where we can where places where we have influence you know if we have influence in you know where, where, if, if we have an influence in our place of work in our school in our place of uh, you know worship or, or clubs or whatever it may be that we where we hang out and spend our time uh you know trying trying to come together to, uh, as 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 a community to 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 try and live better because different individually it's difficult but together anything is possible and that's on a community scale but on a national scale and a global scale you know i, I think the only way that we're you know really we can set these targets and we can achieve the targets but none of the targets are, are, are that are being set in terms of climate plans are really aggressive enough in in terms of countering the real global collapse uh, that we that we that we see. So I I, I don't I don't want I don't want to go too doom and gloom there. But you know there's there's uh, you know, there's, there's there's a real catastrophe that that's just around the corner if we don't shift our ways of being. So I'm just going to share this. This is this is in the presentation. Just some kind of things to think about in terms of gifts. You know this time of year. You know this uh, you know different ways of non physical gifts. You know this is another one. Instead of different ways of wrapping things. You know there's lots of different you know creative ways of, of doing things here's another one about decorations so just just google is your friend for this stuff as well you know there's a lot of stuff out there you know you can just google like how can i do x with less waste and and that information is going to be out there you know I, I would love one day to compile a resource where that stuff is more easily available but that's you know maybe a future project uh, a little bit about reimagine and again you know any of these things i can talk more about but i'm just kind of zooming through for for time so we have a package free grocery store in downtown London. So I'm just this is a, a flyer that we have, and you may or may not know it, but it's on uh, it's on on Piccadilly Street, just west of Richmond Road, next to Cal Tire, and we, we sell all kinds of things that you need for your your home. So it's not just your your fresh produce, uh, fruits and vegetables. It's your frozen items, your pantry goods. And it's your, your soaps and cleaning products and beauty products, everything there package free. So bring your own container, fill up as little as much as you want, and 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 then you only pay for for what you use. And a lot of the uh, most of our produce is organic. A lot of the products are organic, and it's we buy things as locally as possible. We're a family-owned business, and uh, we we appreciate all your support. So this is this is what it looks like from outside the store. You know, this is the refillery. I can actually, I can actually walk you through this in a second, maybe if we have time. It's all the fruit and vegetables and things that that, that we have, and we're you know, and we just launched a new website last week, actually, where where you can actually buy your groceries, all your groceries online, and you can pick them up curbside. And so it's a, it's a little bit not not exactly buggy, but it's, but the website, but it's 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 uh, incomplete. So, but in terms of like some of the products are missing photos and descriptions but we're kind of chipping away at it every day you can actually place orders on it it does work people are placing orders on it already so i encourage you to check that out and uh you know uh, a lot of the things can be delivered if they're not frozen or refrigerated things we can deliver them in the future we, we may be able to deliver those other things as well uh the other you know next big project we think we have going on here is the thing library so i'm actually going to just do a little 180 here you can actually see the thing library over there this is in the space that and this you know the thing library <laughs> is that there's Alyssa there kind of uh, uh organizing the library and this space that we have back here is we have a big community event space where we hold community events uh but the, the thing library is it's a library of things you can it has over over almost 500 items now that you can borrow you, you pay a membership for only just 60 dollars a year you can borrow as many items as you want it's all got and this is just a small selection of gardening tools we've got kitchen tools we've got you know uh, uh, power tools and hand tools and you can check it out all online there's a full inventory that you can see and you just reserve it online come and pick it up borrow it for a week you, like a library you can extend it for longer if nobody else is borrowing it or has it reserved um, that that's here and it's at located in uh, right here at, on Piccadilly Street Thing Library. Uh, we just launched it this year. It has almost a hundred members now. Um, check that out. And uh, another way of re reducing waste, right? And re only buying what you, you need and borrowing things. Repair Cafe. This is a really cool event. If you haven't heard of it, there's over two thousand of these around the world. We used to do them every month before the pandemic. We've just now done three in the last three months, and there's another one coming up uh, in. Uh, 
two weeks and another one coming up early December. Uh, you can, I'll, I'll, I'll share the details. You can bring your broken items and get them fixed for free. It's a really cool concept. We have uh, 10 or 12 volunteer fixers with different skills, people in the community who come and help you bring, uh, you know, fix your broken, broken items for free. All kinds of different things uh, are there that you can that you can fix and learn about. And so that's, again, another way of reducing waste that, that, that we support. And you know, in this space, this event space, like I, like I was mentioning, we have all kinds of events that go on with Hair Cafe comes here. We've had green drinks here. We've had bike bike workshops. We've had composting workshops. Uh, this space is here. If you want to use it for your public event uh, or private event, you can rent, rent the space as well. We cater fully vegan plant-based meals. Uh, that's something else that, that, that we offer for the community. Of, you know, How can this be a hub for sharing ideas and learning together and, and, and trying to do better together? I'm going to share again just rushing through because it just just I want to cover as much as we can in the time some ways that businesses can reduce waste so speak you know specifically talking about, about businesses so shop at reimagine number one please come and shop here you know if you're uh, encourage your, your staff to shop here encourage your you know people you, you work with shop here yourself use this for your events shop online I uh, join the thing library you know we do have options I don't I, I don't have the details right to hand but, but we can I can share that send me an email I can send you details of corporate options for that you know we can do you know, massively discounted memberships for, for companies for that for your staff or for people to sign up directly encouraging littlest lunches this is a huge one i know a lot of businesses locally are doing this where wherever it's some kind of incentive for uh people bringing in a a a, a package free lunch people going out for lunch and not using like single-use containers having potlucks or meals that you have together in the, in your office Form a green team. If you don't only have one in your business, there's another great way of, of doing this. And I, I know Joel can probably provide some support with that. And again, you know, we, we can, I can talk to you about that if you're curious. Why are your cleaning supplies in bulk? Huge one. You know, we can, you know, that's something that Reimagine can support you with. You know, you can support a local company either, you know, we can come and depending on your volume, we can bring you like one liter refills every, every month or every three months, or you can get these big, the big 20 liter jugs. You know, you can you can um, you know you can just purchase those from us, at, at, and, and it's going to be a cheaper option as well. So that's a lot of options there for cleaning supplies, things that you're you're going through. You know, buying them in bulk, recycling, compost. It's shocking how many companies don't do this yet, especially composting. I know it's not easy in London to do because there's no green bin service yet. But it's a huge one, massive one for uh, for sustainability, reducing waste is turning that waste into actually food for next for for, for future generations. A huge huge thing for composting, educating your staff again reimagine can come into we can come and give longer versions of this webinar uh, at, at kind of uh, lunches uh, or anything like that and i, I see there's some, there's some things in the chat so i can't quite get to them right in a second conducting a waste audit huge first step is like understanding what your waste production is and then you can work on reducing it think about different kinds of gifts like we talked about like gift cards experiences different kinds of non-physical gifts to your staff to your clients and so on. Zero waste kits. This is something I don't have all the details. Again, I can share them with you, but we've done this for co companies in the past. We did it for Ikea, where we did over 6,000 uh, kits for their employees. And we did it for Canon um, recently, who were uh, based in Mississauga. We did it over several hundred employees. We create a, a kit that, that they can use as a gift. So you're helping all your employees to, to reduce their waste as well. Talking about some cool things going on locally, and I'll share again these resources in uh, afterwards in the chat. Green Economy London, fantastic resource. Hopefully you know that, uh, but, but there are lots, lots there. Urban Roots is great for, for specifically here for they have a compost program that you can take your compost there. So that's actually what we do with our compost. We just gather it outside our back door every couple of weeks. We just drive out to Urban Roots there on Hamilton Road. They'll take your compost happily. And, and they're also a really cool organization to support. Roots Forest London is great for kind of non-physical gifts, tree planting, another thing of like if you want to invest kif, uh, get, uh, trees as gifts, it's a huge one. Really cool thing. Uh, you know, while uh, check out this app, Recycle Coach is that uh, will teach you how to re recycle things correctly. You know, it might, it's not always straightforward. So I'll tell you with a particular item, do you take, put it on the curb? Do you take it to the landfill? Can you recycle it? And so on. Share Waste, really cool app in the absence of a green bin program in London. You can, it's like a peer-to-peer -peer composting program. So you can basically find neighbors who will accept your, comp your food scraps. So uh, if you don't have the ability to compost yourself or you want to support other people in, in composting their food scraps, you can check that out. Buy Nothing Project, it's a global project where you can, uh, uh, it's, it's really, there's, it's basically lots of local, hyper-local Facebook groups. So there's a, there's a Woodfield one, there's a Piccadilly, uh, there's an, like an Old North one, and there's Westmount one, where you can swap things with your neighbors or just get things your neighbors don't need anymore, uh, and you can get things for free. So that's some really cool things locally. I'll share all these resources. 
And let me just take a quick look at any of these um, uh, uh, questions. Oh, no, just, just, just uh, not really questions, just comments in the chat. Okay, anything else? If anyone has any questions, I can answer them. But thank you very much for listening. I'll share all these resources. Thank you all for your support over the years for Reimagine. It's definitely been, uh, you know, a challenging time for a small business. And, you know, we are, we are undergoing some changes at the moment that we'll be sharing in, in, in the next couple of weeks. But, but it's been a, a really cool uh, community to be part of this London community in, 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 in getting, supporting us on our journey as an organization, trying to support others in reducing waste. And um, it's really great to see so many people on the call today and, and thinking about uh, how, they can, how they can live more sustainably. So thank you. So Alison, you're muted if you're speaking. So <laughs> I was just gonna say thank you for uh, talking with us, Hinal. Um, I did see a quick question about the share waste app, and I believe it is um, not just in London. Um, I know I used it when I was in school because I lived in an apartment building, um, so we didn't have compost. Uh, so it is a great app, um, and I think it is throughout like. Maybe yeah, you just, put, you, you just put in your postal code. I think, yeah, you put in your postal code and we'll give you the, 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 the specific information for the place where you live. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we'll move on here. Um, so we have now Dr. Peggy O'Neill, who is a lecturer at Brescia University College, um, to speak on addressing food waste um, and how it can support food security and resilient food systems as this relates to the Sustainable Development Goals. She is a lecturer in food, leadership, and social change and host of Global News Radio London, 980 CFPL's London Weekly Show, Food for the Future. In February 2020, she attended the United Nations headquarters in New York for the 58th Commission for Social Development, and her work has been featured by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization for North America. As a farm girl from Middlesex County, Peggy knows well that what happens today will set the direction for tomorrow. She has spent her life in agriculture and food as a manager of patient food services in high risk, teaching and research hospitals, professional home economist, award-winning educator and board member and coordinating editor of the International Journal for Home Economics. Peggy's life purpose is to collaborate with agri-food innovators to ensure a flourishing food system for all at home and beyond. I'll pass it to you, Peggy. Thank you very much uh, for that lovely introduction, Alison, and thanks for very much for having me here today. I, uh, I love what the London Environmental Network is doing and also the Green Economy in London. I think it's just fantastic. So it's a special honor for me to be here today. And um, as I was trying to decide what I might be able to offer in the time that I have that would be valuable, I was thinking of, um, and I'm showing I'm a farm girl, a country and Western singer, Loretta Lynn, who said, if, if you want to really do well, you have to be first, um, different or great. Uh, I wasn't first, which is absolutely fine, uh, but I am gonna be different and you'll be able to decide if I'm going to be great. And we often talk about food loss and food waste, certainly in terms of what's happening in the climate, certainly what's happening for life on earth. And I like to also make sure we don't forget the humanities. So what's happening for the human family and I think that it's a little bit of a different way to conceptualize um, reasons for avoiding food waste and loss and hopefully helping us uh, find our purpose to power through whether that's um, washing that peanut butter jar, uh, which I was talking to Allison uh, about before the show started or the program started, because that's one thing I have to really decide every time. I don't mind rinsing out other cans and other things, but that peanut butter resists me. And I feel unified with humanity every time I do do it because it's no one will know. Uh, and it's something that I, I do decide to do. So I also like to be sure that we don't forget the human dimensions of food loss. And so I'm going to be talking today about um, uh, the sustainable development goals from the United Nations. 
And for some reason, my slides are not advancing. There we go. And uh, so I want to talk a little bit about a new view of these things. And certainly, as I mentioned, including members of the human family. So I want to talk a little bit about access and how food relates to all of the sustainable development goals, not just the zero hunger and not just the waste management, that really all 17 have something to do with the human family. And as every individual may not be a Maple Leafs fan, may not be um, from the same part of the world, but we are all members of the human family. So we are unified that way. So I'd like to talk about that. I'd like to spend just a few moments talking about that waste we think of well, there's excess, there's food not consumed, or there's food thrown away that wasn't needed. And the role that hunger in the world has in its relationship to food waste, and how we can build resilient food systems, thinking about the people in it, not just the processes and products, and hopefully arrive at our why, that thing that shifts in our hearts that make us decide we're not going to waste, we're going to go to Reimagine Inc., or we're not going to do certain things anymore. And it's that why that helps power us through some of the tough decisions. One of the other things that happens with food waste and insecurity, we often know what that means in biologic terms, that we have people that aren't getting enough nutrients that they need. But another um, shortcoming of the way that we have been doing things is we've had significant cultural loss. There were ways of doing things, traditional methods, new or other methods. And um, one of the things that I'm an advocate for is cultural recovery. And so we're seeing that in a number of areas. And I brought three examples today just to help inspire you and know that there are many people trying to uh, unify the human family and take steps to protect the human beings when we're talking about um, food loss and food waste. And I wanna just close with um, a visioning or a call to action of how together we can create not just our food, but our world. So I want to um, talk about loss in a new view. And just to be sure, we see a lot of definitions float around and there's many organizations who've offered a perspective, but really food insecurity is not just loss and waste. It's the inability to acquire a diet that matches your consciousness in a sufficient con um, quantity in ways that it is produced in alignment with your values. So there's a, a high standard for food security. It's not just that you have access to anything to eat. It's that you have something that you want to eat that is produced within your values. And we're seeing the term diets of consciousness um, be part of our vocabulary. So food insecurity is not just access to a mass of food, it's a quality and a type of food. And I try to structure and position what I talk about around the three disciplines that we all know. We all know we studied science, we all know that there was social science, but there's also the arts and the humanities. And the reason why I try as often as I can to bring forward the humanities is we do hear a lot of statistics and we absolutely need them. We need to know the numbers on loss and waste. We need to know the effects on climate change. And there's people collecting dollars and, and other indicators, which are really, really important. We also want to hear the emotional appeals. What, where do we need to increase social justice and what is the impact to families and what is the impact to um, in workers or businesses? And we definitely need that. Uh, unrepresented in my opinion view is that we don't always remember ourselves as creators and we don't always see ourselves unified across the human family. So I'm gonna focus on that and hopefully I'm, I'm different enough that you think I offered at least something kind of great today. So we have more than hunger when we saw the definition and loss of waste and, and impact to the environment. When we look at the definition that uh, there's a special moral status to food, and we see this across many cultures and in, in, in the rites and ceremonies in the sort of the cosmology of food and where it fits in the continuum with the universe and its creative expression our ability to define our good life, and then also having the means to pursue it. So having just any food available isn't enough, that we need to protect some of the cultural participation that goes along with food. And we talk a lot, like I said, in numbers when we're talking about food waste, but there's cultural losses as well. And we need to think about that. And what we eat and where it comes from and who, who produced it, it, it prompts reflection uh, on humanity. I had the privilege this weekend to see the patch who I'll talk about in another section of my 
um, discussion today who is doing some amazing work in the city with adults with exceptionalities and of all abilities. And that population creates hundreds of pounds of food and there are restaurants and other places that use it. And so when we think about not just food supply, avoiding loss, uh, producing things closer to home, not having a lot of air miles or um, highway miles on the food we purchase, that there are expressions of the human experience in a very diverse and inclusive way that we need to think about as parts of the answers to solving some of the problems on food loss and waste. So orienting ourselves, not just to what I have to eat or what there is to eat in my community, but also extending out knowing that what I don't waste will be redirected somewhere else, whether that's in the community. We see lots of hunger. I go downtown to the market every, every Saturday and we see more and more people that are in need. And I think about my community, but I also think as a member of the human family, we produce a lot of food. And I was speaking recently with uh, the director of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. And based on my calculations, I thought, okay, here's a human being. We need to eat about four pounds of food a day, times that by 9 billion, divide it by, you know, the number of days. Like it, it's a finite amount of food we need to produce. So how come we have so many hungry people? And um, it's because we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the trade deals. We don't have the um, social um, systems worked out in order to be able to make that happen. So I just encourage everyone as we talk about the environmental impacts of food loss and waste, and the green movement isn't just about um, environmental justice, it's about social um, change. And so talking and thinking about that always and how people animate systems, and if people have been part of the problems, then luckily we can also be creators and find solutions. So food in the human family is deeply rooted in really all of the United Nations sustainable development goals. We can pretty much look at food. You can pick any one of them randomly, and certainly it has something to do with food, gender equality, clean water, partnerships in the attainment of the goals, peace, justice, and strong um, institutions. All of those things behind them have something to do not just with um, a distant climate, but but human beings. And so it's really important, I think, to always think about the human beings and not just the system. The sustainable development goals were formed in um, early, early uh, years of the 1990s at an Earth Summit in Brazil. And um, it was presented later, quite a bit later, actually. Uh, you can see 1992 all the way to September 2015 that that's when the United Nations all came together, the 193 heads of state at that time, to say, yeah, we're going to do something about it. We're going to come together and actually find strategies and do something. And these 17 sustainable development goals really were described as our shared vision of humanity. And really, they are a social contract between the world's leaders and people. So world leaders are not necessarily individuals whose job um, uh, badge says boss. There are emergent and assigned leaders, and there are many, many people that are leaders that are um, part of the solution. Many of these sustainable development goals emphasize that no one should be left behind. And so we definitely need to care for ourselves and our families and our communities. But as we uh, socially design, not just neighborhoods, but socially structure policy or food systems, that we need to keep this in mind. And that again, that there are three dimensions of sustainability and um, not just climate, but the development goals and that are social as well. So it has an important relationship to peace, justice, and effective institutions across the world. I know that um, there's many days I work through lunch and I get to my next meeting, but I definitely know I'm going to be having supper. And when we think of the hardships of individuals who are hungry, um, the decisions they might make in terms of um, conflict or uh, whether that's at home or, or elsewhere in the world, that the role of food in world peace, I think, is underrepresented and something we need to think about. Um, so these are lofty ideologies. I talk today, it's over lunch hour, you may be enjoying your lunch while you're at the table, but what, what can we do? 
And I think of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization was founded actually in Canada. It was talked about before that, but in 1945 in Quebec City in Canada, um, it was ratified that there would be a food and agriculture organization as part of the United Nations. And uh, I, I think of the rainbow connection, you know, uh, and how it's a child's song, but how profound some of the some of the words are. And the line is, somebody thought of that and someone believed it and look what it's done so far. So whether it was a small group of people in Brazil in 1992, whether it was another small group in Quebec in 1945, that there can be a creative evolution, not just a biologic and material evolution. And so I think um, of my own life. And um, I thought people at the United Nations and people doing the work of all of this humanitarian aid were uh, the greats, and, and they actually are. But these two pictures that you see to the left, I took um, in February in New York City. I was at the United Nations. and. Um, there are all these flags, it's almost two city blocks of flags that are out there of the member states and I found the Canadian flag and there it is. And here you see me just inside the New York headquarters in, um, for the United Nations is there's a life-size bronze of Nelson Mandela and um, I'm, uh, I'm kind of tough, I've seen a lot in the world but there weren't enough Kleenex boxes in that building to keep me going because I realized that while there is a global vision, we need individual action. And no one may be watching if we wash that peanut butter jar, if we don't waste fruits and vegetables or proteins or whatever it is. And um, I, I thought, well, I, I'm going to do something. And in my introduction, um, Allison mentioned my show and the United Nations um, has been on my show, London, Ontario, three times, and we're only in season two. So Someone thought of that and someone believed it and look what we've done so far. So I think that we can bring real change and I'm counting on humanity and all members of the human family to do that. So moving from that big ideology and what can each of us do? And I think um, the why is we have to find our own why, but for mine is really understanding the um, a human family won't reach its full potential unless every individual can. And so I think of the scale of waste. Um, I'm not going to talk about the statistics, but there are statistics to be found on the United Nations website on the scale of food that's wasted. Um, Love Food, Hate Waste has also published recently Canadian food loss statistics, and we do have some statistics in London. So when we talk about this problem that can't seem to solve, why is there world hunger? When you look at the food produced, it's a different kind of question. Um, we do have enough food. Um, how do we get it distributed and get past whatever differences we need in order to make it happen, even if we just start in our own community? So uh, for me, the fact that it can materially be done, there are other things that I don't, I can't contribute to the next vaccine for COVID. I'm, I'm a consumer of that knowledge. I'm not sure how to get anyone to space. I'm a consumer of that knowledge. But this, I can, I can stop wasting food. And I can support organizations like we just heard Reimagining and others who are doing the same thing that are on purpose with feeding communities and feeding the world. We have a lot of uh, things we, we don't talk about in terms of food loss and waste. Certainly the environmental is important, but there are living things. Um, I've mentioned already the hunger, but we're starting to see people um, not being able to keep their pets. And there are organizations who are starting to do pet food collection, not just human food connections, so that pets can stay with their families when food is scarce and not able to be afforded. And certain living things we see, um, although alpaca generally are from warmer parts of the world, there is um, not an edible plant anywhere that I can see in that image. And so we have this moment where we're, I think, deciding what life on earth is going to be. And the reason why we're deciding is in the past, there was so much environmental pressure. We had to cut wood to, to get our stove going, to be able to cook something for dinner. And we had all of these environmental things we had to overcome every single day just to live. We didn't have infrastructure and roads. Um, we weren't producing enough food for everyone to eat. We ran out of food, but we're at a time now where we have um, the capacity to actually do it. So the fact that we want to and we can 
are two factors that are really important in um, us realizing the road out together. And I already mentioned that the role of world um, uh, solving uh, hungry people in the world is not a small part of peacekeeping. And again, I rely on the United Nations and this is the um, uh, um, uh, D, um, uh, disarmament, this uh, large gun in New York there is with it being tied on the end is a movement for disarmament and also Canada's role in doing that. And I say Canada, we are multicultural. We have the faces of the world luckily in our nation and we have a really beautiful history that we can learn from many, many people. So the cultural recovery of addressing food loss and waste, that there are social losses that maybe are creating challenges in the food system that are preventing us from managing the waste, whether that's not seeking out local producers or whether that's not listening to ideas from people who have other worldviews that can help us solve problems. And these are not my programs and I am not at pretending to be an expert. I want to shine um, my support on the work that's being done and just remind everyone if we seek things out that there are some amazing things being done and it helps me not remain overwhelmed. Um, we're in very difficult times and I can feel like, well, what can I do? But I do remember global vision, local and individual action. And I think these are real success stories in um, not um, uh, further eroding uh, cultural and uh, social losses. So I already mentioned the right of an individual to choose what they want and how food has special moral status. Um, there's someone, uh, a young person, Esra, who is doing some incredible work to diversify dietetics. So again, the very food education programs that are there, are there things that we missed? And just some examples, we sort of always hear about, well, white rice is this or that. But four hemispheres of the world are sustained almost on white rice. So to perpetually hear something that is culturally significant to you, um, those are examples of why we need diversity and how solutions can come forward to our systems and programming when we widen the lens and include more voices in order to have better solutions. And so I think she's really inspiring as a young person and she's really opened up the doors for many people um, to be able to be matched to uh, mentors in their education that are uh, part of new and different answers. We have some programs um, Food Secure Canada has sponsored where Indigenous people are learning traditional ways of growing food. Every year the United Nations has, um, they do for World Food Day, which just passed October the 16th, they identified food heroes and uh, so leaders in the world, individuals in the world. And we had two people from BC, um, indigenous people who were identified as world leaders and they're developing education programs to avoid cultural loss and help youth understand not just where food comes from, but the uh, cultural significance and the traditional ways of not only looking at it, but growing it and really interacting with it. So I think wonderful, wonderful, um, ways to recover socially. The City of Toronto has done some work on Black food sovereignty and there are a number of programs uh, near Downsview and elsewhere where we are having um, unique expressions of food that help buy local, um, are culturally significant. And so if we love the food and respect the food, we might not waste the food. And so therefore we need many voices and faces in the food system as part of our, our solution and road forward. The patch I spoke about a moment ago with people with exceptionalities are doing incredible things, producing food and learning life skills. And you certainly would never want to waste it. The food, when you look down at it, not only are you grateful to have it because you won't be hungry, but when you really think of the care and the love that went into it, I think the diverse perspectives are part of the answer in building resilient systems avoiding food loss and waste, actual food loss and waste, but also cultural and humanitarian loss and waste. So in close, I wanna just remind us that we are creators. Uh, the humanities have told us that through the ages and across places in the world, there's always been the arts and expressions of what uh, the human family is capable of, or at least dreams of what could be. 
And so I'm really looking forward to um, continuing to work with everyone here and being inspired by you to uh, address food waste and food loss for the human family and together to build those resilient systems with many views, many answers, and uh, I'm looking forward to a cultural and uh, human family recovery. Don't forget the arts and humanities as you continue to work through things and, and challenge yourself. And I continue to challenge myself and our groups and organizations around how can we contribute to creative expression, cultural participation, connect with humanity for ourselves, others, and for the environment. So thank you very, very much for having me here today. And uh, I'd love to receive any questions uh, or comments that anyone has. Yeah, I think um, we'll just take the questions in the Q&A. Um, so if anyone has any, um, we can do that. All right. Is that slide All right, so um, that was a great, thanks from Dr. O'Neill for talking to us about food insecurity and um, just kind of looking over that we need the diverse solutions um, really to address um, food and food waste. Um, so I'll kind of um, go back um, to look into more waste in general um, as a business now. So in addition to the great resources we heard today um, from both our speakers, um, there's also some resources that Green Economy London can offer. Um, so one of our four target areas is focused on waste reduction and diversion, setting a target. So And so setting a target will help you reduce as much as possible and focus on ways to divert the remaining consumption of waste, uh, so conducting a waste audit of your facility um, will help to determine the quantity and consumption of your waste streams. Collecting data on waste streams is important to understand where you're at, uh, which is your baseline, and then determine diversion and contamination amounts. So what you do me don't measure, you can't track. So reviewing operations and waste generations gives an understanding of the types of waste materials entering and exiting your facility. Waste audits are a great starting point to allow your business to make strategic decisions on how to allocate resources for source reduction and improved recycling programs. Some of the types of uh, diversion projects that you may choose to implement include uh, centralized waste systems, going paperless, e-waste recycling, and supply chain management. So for those of you interested in learning about your own waste streams, you can always conduct a waste audit at home. Uh, that's always a fun <laughs> job there. Uh, we also have a waste reduction and diversion guidebook um, with resources for anyone to review uh, to help determine types of projects that can be completed uh, to reduce waste. Some of the action projects include having zero waste lunches and sustainable printing. Some of the reduction projects include discouraging single use plastics, cups and water bottles, composting, and then learning about zero waste practices to incorporate into the kitchen and bathroom. And so collaborating with community partners is another way to address food waste, food insecurity, and waste all together. Two of our green economy leaders, New Leaf uh, Plant-Based Food, which is a food truck whose mission is to contribute to a food industry that supports the mindful consumption of healthy plants in the Wormery at the Western Fair District, um, have partnered together. And this has given New Leaf the opportunity to divert their food waste scraps um, and scraps from their truck to the wormery. The wormery then com composts the scraps and uses the worms to divert the waste um, back to plants and keep the cycle going. So the wormery can compost anything from kitchen scraps, grass clippings, leaves, sawdust, shredded paper, um, and another assortment of items. So if you are at all interested in collaborating with the wormery for your home or business, uh, you can reach out to Dan um, and their email is on the screen. So another um, partnership our leaders take part in is Plant a Row, Grow a Row initiative um, with the London Food Bank. So this initiative encourages gardeners uh, to grow an extra row of their favorite fruit and veggies and donate this uh, to the food bank. So it's a wonderful way to make a meaningful 
change um, and action towards assisting people experiencing poverty and food insecurity. And the last tip uh, that we have today is to be innovative. Find those different ways that work for your business to address waste. Um, one of the examples is Carmina de Young and their Fashion with a Purpose initiative. This program uses their scraps of fabric to make plot, uh, pots for different types of uh, plants and trees. For example, like they have some apple and pear trees. Uh, this repurposes the scraps to keep them away from the landfill. And as always, we invite you to reach out to um, us about your business waste reduction goals. Uh, so we now have um, our question and answer um, period. So if you have any questions, um, can you, you just pop them in the chat and then we can uh, get to them. Let's see if there's any here. Stop sharing so I can check them. All right, well, looks like we have one here um, for either Peggy um, or Hino. Over the past few years, um, what direction do you see individuals and businesses taking? Are they more conscious um, about waste reduction um, or anything you can add to that? That's a good question. I think, I think it depends on uh the person and the business i mean i think we've seen interesting you know this pandemic has really kind of made things a bit weird that people's priorities shift a lot i think before that i would have said yes we're definitely seeing a shift in people's behaviors towards more emphasis on waste reduction sustainability caring for our planet however you know with the pandemic people shifted into self-preservation mode quite understandably and, and that definitely shifted things uh so yeah i think i think it depends you know there's and I'm, I'm not sure people are coming back around to it yet i think so but it was for a while waste reduction zero waste was trendy it is no longer trendy um so i, I don't know what the next trend will be or if we can kind of recapture some of that vitality that was in the movement before or what it would take to do that i you know something that has shifted i think or is is, is i think bigger businesses are, th are thinking about it you know we're seeing bulk bins in places that didn't have bulk bins. We're seeing different kinds of behaviors, composting, recycling in, in larger businesses, but I'm not sure like on the individual consumer level, small business level, what the what the shift looks like. I'm curious, Peggy, what, you, what you're observing. I, I would agree with you. I think that there were so many things during the pandemic. We were throwing things away almost every day, whether it was a mask or a sanitizer container, or, you know, we didn't want to touch something. So we understand all of that. And now here we are. And part of our recovery, I hope, is getting back to the aims that we all had. And I think I'm about people, people, people. And I think people, as terms of employees, when they have choices, uh, places to work, they really are attracted to not just the values of organizations, but the things they're actually doing. And so managing waste, whether that's um, the programs in their own operations or whether it's supporting from a corporate social responsibility perspective, various programs that are doing work in communities. I think that's really important for um, many generations now that are in the workforce are looking for that. I think also consumers are more um, aware of if I have a choice between this brand and that brand, this brand is being environmentally conscious, I'm going to support this brand. So it might cost a little bit more. Um, sometimes the price is the same, but the value add to the consumer is you aren't just getting the item you purchased, you're getting you're participating in the entire uh, vision for what the world could be. So I think people, uh, both employees and consumers, are going to help move that agenda forward when it's been difficult for corporations sort of to be pace setters on their own with the many priorities they have. That was a good question. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I guess I have one. Um, what is probably the most challenging thing in your field of work um, that for either one of you? Um, that really is like impacting climate action. Like if you could take one, one of the most challenging, there may be multiple, um, but kind of what is the most challenging thing um, towards climate action that we should address? For, for me, it's, um, you know, we think of inertia when we study physics, an object at rest will remain at rest unless a force greater than it moves it. 
And I think whether it's in an individual or socially, it's, it's that inertia that we, we hear about these things, we support these things, but when it comes to individual behavior change, like real behavior change, I'm no longer going to buy, you know, items that are packaged or things that have been shipped across this, you know, distance or whatever it is, or sometimes I actually might not write my amount of food because locally it's not in season or whatever. Those are the kinds of things that I think are some of the biggest challenge because once we decide whether we're an individual, uh, a community, or the room, once we actually decide, um, we can definitely do a lot of things. Yeah, I would say, yeah, with once we decide, I think for me as well, to adding to that, I think just making it easy and making it trendy again. Like, why is it not, why isn't it cool to, <laughs> to like care for the planet? That should be cool, right? That should be like something that people aspire to. Like, you know, I don't know what that is, but it could just be, I don't know, I don't know what that looks like. I don't really understand culture and trends, but, but that's something that, that it frustrates me, I suppose. And then I guess the other thing kind of practically is, is the how much meat and dairy we consume in, in this country. And it's just completely ridiculous. And I was, I was, and just the lack of vegan options in, in mainstream restaurants. I was in the UK uh, visiting family last a uh, couple months ago and everywhere, every, everywhere has, has, has vegan options, like everywhere without, like even the Tim Hortons there has so many vegan options. The Tim Hortons in England, where they only have like three Tim Hortons in the whole country, they have so many vegan options. Like why can't they do that here where they have thousands of Tim Hortons? Like it doesn't make any sense. So that, and then just finally uh, tra transit, public transit, like the lack of transit in this city, it's a big city, it's a wealthy city, relatively London, right? And you know, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get from any point in the city to any other point in the city with transit and with better biking and, and uh, walking options. So those are just huge con contributors to, to ways to climate change and, and to unhealthy lifestyles that, that I would love to see changed somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's good that we, at least all of the people who probably joined the webinar today do think it's a bit of a, a trend or in at least <laughs> it's something that they believe in. Um, so I think that's all we have for questions. Let me see. Um, oh, here's one. Um, so I'm not sure if it's trendy. Um, if trendy is how we want this whole concept of waste reduction to go, I find that trends also tend to bring a premium. Do you think we'll ever see a de decrease in premiums associated with being more environmentally friendly? Good question. I mean, I guess, yes, I absolutely do. And, you know, I think I think we're going to see that very soon. Like, I think if you come to our store to reimagine, you'll see actually buying in bulk, it's going to save you money. You're not paying, if you're not paying for this extra packaging, you're not paying for that to be transported to containers and all that. So you'll find actually, if you buy in bulk, whether it's from our store or from a farmer's market or from a, any, any other you know bulk store, for example, you will find that is 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 going to save you money, and also like a premium, like walking places and biking places is way cheaper than driving places. You know, I think so. But but in terms of some products, sure, you know, you, there's a premium. But we're already seeing, like I've already seen in the in a couple of years that we've had this business, the price of like Beyond and Impossible and all those things are coming down massively. You know, those those kind of alternative uh, proteins. For, for example. So absolutely, I think it's it's all about mass adoption and any new trend is going to be expensive for the early adopters, whether it's, you know, any kind of technology. So I think, I think absolutely, we're going to see that. We're already seeing it. Yeah, and, and I agree. And I, I would add to that, there's nothing more cost effective than eating everything you purchase. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, the food that you get uh, that you don't eat not only affects the environment because it's food waste, but it also you got to pay for it again because you didn't get to eat it. You have to buy more. So not you, you might be able to um, have food that is more in alignment with your values or uh, possibly a little bit more money. If you eat it all, your net budget comes down. So wait, taking the just sort of any basic operating principles, best practices, take the waste out of the system before you start investing in more. And that principle applies for home food systems and love every bite love where it comes from and respect it and you won't waste it. And embrace the leaders. I, I recently saw somebody, um, I wasn't eating in the food court at a very busy mall, um, but they pulled out their plate and their knife and their fork and said, could you put my meal on this? And, and there was almost a crowd going, my goodness, what's happening over there? Uh, because the bins are billowing with all of the waste and, and, and you know, wow, there's a leader, bravo, you know, embrace the leaders. That's awesome. That's, <laughs> I wish I was there to see that. <laughs> it was quite something. 
All right. Well, I think that's it for questions. Um, so we'll uh, finish the webinar um, just now here. Um, that's pretty much all we have. Um, so, on. so I just want to um, thank everyone who came to listen today. Um, and we hope you learned something new about the research and practices of zero waste and food resiliency. Um, I do think that there's at least one action item all of us can take home um, and incorporate into our daily lives. And I want to give a big thank you to Hino and Peggy, who have generously taken times out of their busy schedules to speak with us. Um, if you do have any further questions, um, my email is on the screen here. And also, you can reach out to our hub manager, Caitlin. Um, so have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.